say with me, hunger. I can hear when people lose their hunger for God. Or I can hear when they don't have a river that flows out of them because religion has settled into them. Religion settles in and it makes a person, it makes a person stubborn. It makes them unable to flow with God. It makes them unable to detect the currents of the Spirit. It makes them unable to detect the winds of where the Spirit is blowing, where the Spirit is breathing. And religion does it because religion is simply, let's do what we did yesterday. And I said it in Krugersdorp, I said the band become religious and then not just that the band is evil, but you know, if there is not a change of mind, then we get into a thing where we just do what we always used to do. And what happens is it creates and it causes the people not to encounter God because now it's religious. And the people think two songs and uh, then announcements or offering or whatever and then another two songs and we're going to get into the Word or it's two songs and then we're singing in tongues and then it's going back to the song is religion. Even though you think it's flowing and charismatic, even in your flow you have made it religious. Are you guys with me? So, so I can feel when a church um, priorities has changed or shifted and there's no river to flow. Now, I, know, I don't know what Pastor Martin preached last. I mean, I know he preached on the river. I'm not going to preach on that. Uh, I, don't know, I don't know how he preached it. Um, but uh, 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 where the river is preached, the river must flow. The river must flow out of the belly of someone, or meaning out of the belly of the people, and there must be rivers of living water. You think with your mind which resists the river, and you believe in your heart, but you flow with your belly. Are you with me? You think with your mind, you believe in your heart, but you flow with your spirits, which is your belly. Now we are not an AFM church or a Levant of Word church. So I don't want people to respond in that manner. I want us to, and if you feel about how do I rebuke? Well, you can leave. I can rebuke if the church is my children. If I feel that people's hearts have become dull, you know, they're just standing and worship just like that. So either the band is not doing it, even if the band is not doing it, why are people just standing like that and they're just going through the motions? Because you are religious. Listen to me. You have gone out of touch with a vine. You have lost intimacy. You cannot connect. Because... It's religion. Pride settles in. Pride. When pride comes in, and I shared it this morning, familiarity is very dangerous. Familiarity breeds contempt. Familiarity removes every trace of the presence. Familiarity stops God from any way of working. Meaning that if we want Him to be poured out in the conference or to be moving in a conference that is coming up, there must be a hunger from the people. Are you guys with me? Whenever I feel that my hunger is, is not moving the way that it should, I do my best to separate myself or fast or pray until I can get to the face of God. The thing is that uh, 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 people get familiar because they have seen things done over and over. So they want all the time something new and that pushes preachers to either burn out or it pushes them to fake miracles. And yes, 90% of them fake miracles around the country. They pull people out of wheelchairs faking it. They make people walk where they cannot walk. And they're faking it. I'm not saying everyone, but most, because they feel pressurized now to do a miracle. 
because the people continually want to see something new or want to see something fresh. There's a difference between new and freshness, and I taught on this. Fresh can be something old, but it is fresh with oil. But for the oil to be activated, there must be honor and not familiarity. There must be an awe and not familiarity. How does the presence come in? The Bible says that fear came upon them all in the New Testament. Great fear came upon them. And then it says great grace began to move about them. Are you guys with me? Great grace began to move. But what was there? There was a fear of God. There was an awe that came in. And the problem is that people, and it's not about whether I see miracles or not. No, no, no. It is about how do I see Jesus that is in me? How do I perceive Him with my eyes? Am I at a place where I stay hungry and I keep myself hungry? Or I keep the fire burning in the tabernacle? He said, Adam, I'm putting you in the garden to tend and keep the garden. To guard it, but to keep it. Meaning you have to keep it fresh. I'm putting a priest in a temple to keep the fire burning. To keep the flame burning 24 hours a day. That was the job of the priest. To do the functions in the temple and to keep the utensils going in the temple. Are you guys with me? So... When you don't do that because you are the temple of the Holy Spirit and you don't keep the fire burning, the devil intrudes with certain things. He comes into the thought and the mind realm. And the moment he touches the thought and the mind realm, unbelief enters a person. When unbelief enters a person, fear and doubt comes in and legalism comes in. Because now they want to please God or they think they are good by a certain way, but fear and doubt comes in. Listen to me. Demons come to people because of fear, doubt, and legalism. Are you guys with me? Fear, doubt, and legalism. So when I don't keep the temple, you see, Centurion has grown... Uh, uh, very familiar. If we get to Kruger's Dorp, it's not familiar. We get to Centurion, it's familiar. And something has changed regarding the sound um, in the atmosphere because people have become familiar. So familiarity gives a smell that is not good. The lady with the issue of blood was in a crowd of how many people? And she pressed through the crowd to touch the hem of his garment. And she received the healing. Yet every single other person touched him. But the touch was different. It had no smell of honor. It had no smell of awe. It had a smell of familiarity. Familiarity will remove you so quickly from Christianity when you lose the fear of God, when you lose the respect, the awe of God. Before you know it, sin takes over like this. Before you know it, unbelief enters the heart. And God cannot move on your behalf anymore. Because whatever He does, you're blinded to, able, unable to see it. All you see is, all you go through is the motions. Are you guys with me? Nowhere in the Bible does it say that we have been called to work, we have been created to worship God. Nowhere. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that Adam has been created to worship him. It's a nice saying, and maybe it preached okay, but nowhere does it say that we have been created to worship God. Nowhere. Some might get offended by me saying it, but go read the Bible. We have been created to occupy and take territory. That is why Jesus came to remind us, occupy till I return. Go and make disciples of all nations. Go and take the gospel out there. 
When we think we are created to worship, it makes you lazy. Because it's, in, it's inward focus. It's not outward focus. So guess what? As long as I worship God in my room, everything is good. No, no, no. The fire is dead. Because the oil can only flow the more empty vessels there are. And the prophet said to the widow, as long as you get empty vessels and empty jars, the oil will keep flowing. Meaning the anointing leaves a church. When they no longer have the lost in a church, the anointing leaves your life. The no longer, when you no longer reach the lost or have empty vessels to put it into. How do you, do you want gifts of healings on you all the time in a Sunday and we have a holy huddle? It's religion. Are you guys with me? It's religion. And he said, the oil will not run out as long as you go and borrow empty vessels. The anointing is not for you and I. It is for those that come in with a need. It is for those who are in need of Him. I'm not speaking of religion or there's a lot of churches when they plant their churches, they go and they take people from other churches. And uh, I know them, they do it all over. The anointing comes to those who come as an empty vessel into the service. But how many empty vessels have you reached? How many empty vessels are you reaching? Because people are crying, I don't have my breakthrough. You will not cry about your breakthrough when you do your purpose. Because you'll be too busy with your purpose than to cry about just thinking about you. You know how Christians are? Oh, my breakthrough, my financial struggle, my hundredfold reaping, this, that. And everything is me, myself, and I. I, I, I. Everything is me, myself, and I. Go Isaiah, where we were, Isaiah 14, verse 9. How from beneath is excited about you? Are you guys with me? No, I know you're not going to hell. We hope if you're truly saved. If you're not truly saved, uh, you will go to hell. If you're truly saved, you, if you're truly saved, you will not go to hell. So, how from beneath is excited about you? Meaning, how is hungry? for people yet people have lost their excitement and hunger about God to meet you at your coming it stirs up the dead for you now he's speaking and it's going to go into Lucifer so don't worry all the chief ones of the earth it is raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations they all shall speak and say to you have you also become as weak as we? Have you become like us? So these are the nations that Lucifer led, that he ruled over. These were the nations that he ruled over. And when he was going to be brought down, the Bible says they will look at him. The nations will look at him and say, are you the one? Have you also become as weak as we? Have you become like us? Are you the one? Your pomp is brought down to Sheol. Your pride, so with your pride, is brought down to Sheol and the sound of your stringed instruments, the maggot is spread under you. Speaking of Lucifer here, and worms cover you. How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground. Hold on. What do you cut down? Okay. So, how you are cut down to the ground. You were weakened, you who weakened the nations. You who weakened the nations. 
For you have said in your heart, I will ascend. Say with me, I. I will ascend into the heavens. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit, say with me, I will sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest side of the north. North is a sign of pride. East is, a, is, is pointing towards the glory always. So that is why the sun comes up in the east. So east points towards the sun, which is the glory of God. North speaks of pride because it is the location of God. It is the high and lofty one. So what did Lucifer do? He was facing north, not facing east. What did Daniel do when he prayed? He faced east. Are you guys with me? What did Lucifer do? He was putting himself in the north, on the furthest side of the north. Next verse. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I, I, I. I will be like the Most High. Yet you shall be brought down to Sheol, to the lowest depths of the pit. They that see you, those who see you will gaze at you and consider you saying, is this the man who made the earth tremble? Who shook kingdoms? Who made the world as a wilderness and destroyed its cities? Who did not open the house of his prisoners? All the kings of the nations, all of them sleep in glory. Everyone in his own house. Listen. So with me, I. So what are Christians concerned about? The only thing they are concerned about is me, myself, and I. It's my breakthrough. If I pray right now, everybody that wants breakthrough for finances, everybody comes to the front. And all they see is their problems because they cannot see anyone else's problems. So we have become a Christian or a, a people that are inwardly focused and not outwardly focused. The moment you become inwardly focused, you die spiritually. Because why must the anointing be given to you? For goosebumps to feel good or to reach someone? The oil and the anointing is given to you to reach someone. Uh, are you guys with me? So a lot of times the church can become inward focused and it's about the presence, it's about the anointing which we all focus on that must be there. But we lose the purpose of the presence or the purpose of the anointing. Jesus says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach the gospel, to open up the eyes of the blind, to set at liberty those who are bound, to set free the captives, and to preach the gospel to the poor. But he says, for this purpose, the Spirit of the Lord has anointed me. So the Spirit of the Lord will only anoint you for a purpose. That purpose is not business. Are you guys with me? Business is for yourself. There's a, the, so there's three functions. There's the king, the priest, and the prophet. The king is to take dominion. The priest is to take care of your family and those whom God has put in your covering, in your influence. The prophet is the one that has the ability to speak out. So your purpose is to make disciples of all nations. Are you guys with me? And Jesus left us by saying this commandment. Yes, everybody's like, love the Lord your God. And I, that's, the, that's nothing new. That's just the 10 commandments summed up in the greatest commandment. But then he left us with a great commission, with the last commandment. And he said, go and make disciples 
of all nations. Meaning from the day that you got saved up until now, how many people have you gotten saved? How many have you discipled? That will determine the anointing level upon your life. Everybody wants the anointing, yet God is saying, I'm not seeing empty jars. All of us want to be filled with the anointing, but yet it's going nowhere. Are you guys with me? So He fills you with the anointing and the Spirit of the Lord anoints you when you know how to give it out to somebody and to go to those who need it, those who are blind, those who are poor, those who are bound, those who are taken captive, and you pray or minister to them and then the anointing is given to you. But people want the anointing first and then to go do it. No, no, no. He says, go out and do it. I commanded you to lay hands on the sick. Cast out devils, heal the sick. Are you guys with me? And if you shall lay your hands on the sick, they will be healed. Or lay your hands on the sick and they shall recover. He didn't say wait for the anointing, then lay your hands and then you recover them. No, no, no. Lay your hands and they shall recover. Either the gospel is true or not. The problem is we try to lay hands on Christians all the time. Why don't you see healing? Because you're laying your hands on an unbelieving believer. Are you guys with me? Why do you think we don't move in the gifts as much as we should? Because you've, you've seen how many gifts. What do you want to see more? It is time to take it out. Otherwise, you're going to lose it. The Bible says if you don't use it, you lose it. Don't come the, it's without repentance. No, no, that's the callings. The anointing is not without repentance. The anointing is with repentance, not without repentance. Callings are without repentance. The Bible says gifts and callings. But the anointing, if you don't use it, you lose it. Are you guys with me? So when I become inward focused, it is selfish. It is me, myself, I. And it is what we call the Antichrist spirit. Everybody is waiting for the Antichrist as a person. Yet John is saying, we'll open up Revelation much more deeper, maybe in two years, three years time. Uh, maybe in two years or three years time. But John is saying, the Antichrist, speaking about the Antichrist, but not once referencing it to a man, but referencing it to people in the church. The book of John. Are you guys with me? Go read it in the book of John. And he says the Antichrist spirit is already here. It's in the church. Which meaning there are some that is Antichrist and about themselves. So there were Gnosticism that entered the church where John was, where John, where John pastored. And it entered the church. And as Gnosticism entered, it was about themselves and not about others. But because they were Gnostics, they were not saved. That is why John says, if we confess our trespasses one to another, we shall be, uh, he shall forgive our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. He wasn't speaking to believers there. He was speaking to the Gnostics, unbelievers in the church, who listened to another gospel, was teaching false teachings. And because they listened to another gospel, they were never really genuinely saved. So it was apostasy that took place. So he says, listen here, and he was speaking as a whole group. He says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. But that cannot count to us as Christians because our sins are already forgiven. We are already made righteous. So how can we be cleansed from all unrighteousness? Are you guys with me? So he was speaking to a group in the church that was about me, myself, and I. So the question is this, how many, since the day of my salvation, how many people have I gotten saved? How many people have I discipled? And have I put my image into them? Which is the image of Christ. Are you guys with me? So the church doesn't grow or become stale because there's only 20% in the church that is doing the work. 
yet there should be 80% that is doing the work. So we have either preached a gospel wrong, or we have made it look impossible, or we are preaching to a people that will never be able to do anything. Either one of those three things. And we hope and trust it's not the third one. I was speaking this morning and I said, you know, white people has this familiar thing upon them where they are unable to detect or sense the presence of God. They are unable to receive the supernatural. Here they can because we take them through the DNA, but do you know how many things we have to take them through? When all of you come in, you just, in the beginning, you just come and you just stand, you receive nothing. Then we have to teach you, this is how you receive when you lay hands. This is the, that's how religion has messed you up. Religion has killed a lot of people. Are you guys with me? Don't fall back and don't go back into religion. For Galatian, Paul said to the Galatian church, he says, who has bewitched you? That you have started off in the Spirit, but you have gone back to the law. You have gone back into a place where it is almost like you were not saved. Who has bewitched you? Who have preached a different gospel to you? And he says, if anyone preaches a different gospel to you, let him be accursed. So the devil comes into the hearts of Christians. Or let me say it like this, the devil comes into the lives of Christians because their hedge has a gap in it. And their hedge gets a gap in it because they allow their thoughts and their hearts to go off. So how did Satan enter the garden? The hedge was broken. I'm going to show it to you now in the scripture. Are you guys with me? The hedge was broken. So what is happening? How does Satan come into people's lives? Because many times, you know, when I preach, I look at people's faces. Do you know how many times I see condemnation on your faces? And then I'm thinking, who is, where are you listening to the law? Are you listening to some preacher there on YouTube? Uh, I don't know who. But are you listening to somebody there on YouTube? Who is preaching? Who has put condemnation over you? Or why are you listening to the lies of the devil about you? The only way the enemy can enter into your life is by a thought. The only way we break the protection of God upon our lives is by our thoughts. We'll get into the verses now. But I want to address this thing. Where are, uh, where, you know, we, we faced a lot of opposition and we had people sending people inbox messages and writing articles about us. Uh, there was one person, I think, how many articles did they write? 90, 90. 90 articles about us. So we sent him a lawyer's letter. After seven years of 90 articles, thinking that, uh, you know, but it was character assassination. And what they would do, they would destroy the church. And since the man received the letter, there was not one post ever from there. Now they claim, or I just heard a calling vapor, oh, the person is now so sick. Whatever. You are an enemy of the cross. So we had to take somebody out in Kruger's door because they try to film and then try to film us in the service this morning. So we asked them, please stop filming. And then they manifest. And they were sent by these people. The problem is these people send messages or people even in our church listen to the... Why do you think... And please, they want to do all these stupid shows on us. God bless them. You're going to see it come out. It's nothing new. It's already happened. And they're doing it to the true churches in, 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 in the nation. Wow. Well... It's some, some true, true some, some or genuine, genuine cult, cult. but uh, um, uh, and uh, it's always white Afrikaans people from the news to shows to everywhere what is it white Afrikaans people and it is white people 
that have resisted God in this nation. And we are so quick and easy to say, oh, you know, traditionalism and traditionalism is in the government and in the... God doesn't care to sense what's happening there. He's caring what the church is getting up to. For God, the government is not in control. The church is His ecclesia, which is a political name, which means in the spiritual realm, it is not the president or the government that rules. It is the church that is supposed to be ruling. And why do I use white? I can say white because I'm white. So it's, you know, but it's a thing that if you really look at your heart, it is there. I'm not saying everyone. I'm, I'm saying, why are we getting attacked? Always being, it's always, you will never see a black person calling something a cult. But you'll see a white person calling something a cult. So now we see the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. So no wonder God cannot move in certain things. Are you guys with me? And it is time that that thing has to be broken. That we can have a multi-generational or a multi-national type, a multi, a, 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 a different racial type church. Meaning that it is, we are not a white church. We are not a black church. We are not an Indian church or a colored church. That it is mixed and we regard no one after the flesh, but after the spirit. Because this thing grieves the Holy Spirit. Where I see with our fellow white people, how they are just, it's like, it's like there's no hunger in them. It's religion. You need to repent of your religion and your pride. I don't know how many are watching, but they need to repent of their religion and their pride. Because Lucifer said, I will, I will, I will, I will. I'm going to speak to my pastors tonight about things, what they do where they grieve the Holy Spirit. And if I don't address these things, then no one will address it. And the church will move into a place of stagnancy. Uh, um, uh, 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 uh. Words were just going through the motions and they're going to create a dead stream. You see, Go to Revelation 22, verse 1. Revelation 22, verse 1. It says, And he showed me a pure, say with me, a pure, a pure river of water of life, not water of death, not an impure river. Meaning that when there is, Jesus is saying, When you taste of this gift in me, if you drink of this water in me, a fountain will spring forth in you. And there will be rivers of living water that will flow out of your heart, out of your belly. Meaning that when you speak, there will be a life that will come forth. There will be rivers of living water that will flow. And if there's not rivers of living water, have you tasted the gift? Because if there's no rivers, you haven't tasted the gift. Are you guys with me? So when I taste and drink of the waters that He has, and when I eat of the gift of eternal life, the fruit of the tree of life, what is the fruit of the tree of life? It is eternal life. God said, let's stop Adam and Eve from getting to the tree of life. Let they eat it and become like one of us and never die. So now Jesus comes as the tree of life. What Adam and them couldn't touch, which was eternal life. He comes now and He brings salvation and He gives eternal life. But He says, if you eat of that fruit of the tree of life, you will have a pure river flowing out of you 
And if there's no river coming out of you, you might not have eaten of the fruits of the tree of life. So how do we detect? How do we inspect? The Bible says, I want you to test whether you are in the faith or not. What does it say? Test. Is it test? Does it say test? Test and see whether you are in the faith or not. Not saying examine yourself, he says. Whether you are in the faith or not, examine yourself. To see was my salvation mental or was it believing with my heart fully and does that result in rivers of living water that is flowing out of me? Now there can be things that can block the river from flowing. You see, you have ankle deep, knee deep, waist deep, and fully immersed. Are you guys with me? What is it? Ezekiel 48, 47. You are fully immersed. The problem is this, that when the river came out of the temple, it was ankle deep. And the further it went away from the temple, it became deeper and deeper. So by the temple, it was ankle deep. Further away, it went knee deep. Further away, it went waist deep. Further away, it is fully immersed. The river in your life can only increase when you reach people out of the temple. Because the rivers are flowing out of the temple. And the deeper you want to go, the further you have to go. So people that are staying in the temple, listen, it's old covenant. The church is there to be equipped on a Sunday. But then it is for you to take the river out during the week and take what you have received here. But you cannot receive if you have not been faithful out there. Because if you don't use it, you lose it. Are you guys with me? And a lot of people are waiting to mature before they can minister. While well, the Bible says, I want you to minister before you mature. We have raised, uh, people have, uh, you know, you got this soy boy uh, generation. Or what do they call them? Like a, I don't know, a weak generation. Snowflake. I see this. They're making this movie in America called American, was it American Gospel or something like that? Is it American Gospel? And uh, they speak about cessationism and they're speaking how the charismatic church is off and there's no more gifts and they do this whole thing and they're spreading these things in America. And there was this 40 year old man, uh, some liberal type thing that shouldn't be a pastor. I'm not exactly sure what was going on there. And he was sitting there with his hair come over and dresses in his liberal way. And he's now a pastor that gave up or something. And he starts crying and he's like, oh, you know, the church hurt me so much. I'm thinking, grow up. What a coward you are. Sitting there crying, you should be a man that is 40 years old and take over, uh, not crying whether a pastor hurt you now that moved in the gifts. Shut up. It's an embarrassment already just, I mean, if I have to see myself like that, I would want to give encounter away. So, people have lost the river in them because they are not reaching the lost. They are not getting the new into the church. And then what happens is the anointing, it cannot be a holy huddle if there's no growth. Even in your cell groups, you will see what is happening in your cell groups. The moment there's new people, you'll feel an anointing in the presence. I promise you. So I think the church is sitting, I think we're sitting on 120 e-groups right now. I think.
think so. We started off the beginning of this year that I was told. We were started off in 70 e groups. I was told. Huh? Grown 39 e groups this year. Why are your people not coming to church? It's okay if they're out there. It's okay. People complain about petrol. People complain about these things, yet they go other way, other places. Um, it's okay. So it's okay to be out there. But unless, so the church is going to die out that are inward focused. I've seen it. I've seen people with great gifts and they plant churches and so on and it stays 50 people or 100 people. It stays that amount of people for how many years? Because it's all about the inward focus, not the outward focus. Are you guys with me? Jesus said, occupy till I come. But what happens is that Satan enters our garden, our lives, through our thoughts. So I can look in somebody's eyes and see what thoughts they have. If it's thoughts of condemnation, or if it's thoughts of how, what do they think about themselves? The question is, what do I think about themselves? Because the way I see myself is the way the enemy sees me. The way I carry myself is the way the enemy sees me. Joseph carried himself like the master of dreams when he walked and he walked as if he was in his future already. He carried and walked as if his brothers and everybody was bowing in front of him already. Are you guys with me? And because he walked that way, guess what? They saw him that way. You will only be received by the way that you see yourself. Are you guys with me? So there must be a river that is stirred up. So when I was preaching Christophe, I think last week, Sunday or so, we said that don't just stand and worship and we just stand. No, no, no. The river, don't think the Holy Ghost is going to come. No. You move and He moves. And then there's a place where you have to completely give over. Do you know as a prophet that I should not or cannot even prophesy accurately unless I'm drunk in the river? So you'll see when we prophesy, especially when we lay hands or so, it's like I'm swinging or you're swinging because you are drunk. And a prophet can only prophesy when they are drunk. When they are fully immersed in the river. They cannot do it at ankle deep. Or knee deep because it's the mind is going to be still out of the river and it's still going to be operating but only once they are fully immersed same with you only once you are fully immersed can the Holy Spirit fully use you to the capacity where the gifts can come out of you and you can lay hands on people and they can get healed because in Acts chapter number two Peter stood up and he said these men are not drunk as you suppose but they are filled with the Holy Ghost as it was said and prophesied by the prophet Joel that in the last days I will pour out my spirits and on your sons and your daughters and on all flesh I will pour my spirits and they will prophesy and they'll see visions and they'll see dreams. But what was he saying? He says they look drunk because they are in the river. Are you guys with me? So unless you can tap in with worship into the river, Are you guys with me? Say with me, the river. You cannot flow or move with God outside of being, letting the river take you. When you're ankle deep, you're resisting. When you're knee deep, you're resisting. Who is somebody that is ankle deep? You can lay hands on them, you can prophesy, you can do anything, and they're just standing there. They're not even ankle deep. They're not even in the river. And then you'll see there's a moment where you can be so drunk that you don't even have to have lands laid upon you and it feels like a power pushes you. Why? You're out of yourself. Your spirits, you're now the other man. 
the spiritual man, when the Spirit of the Lord comes and rushes upon you, you will be changed into the other man. You'll be changed into another man. But people have allowed a lot of sins that weighs them down. And they are unable to flow with the Holy Ghost. They are unable to flow where the river or where the Spirit of God is taking them. Please understand, everywhere it speaks of the Holy Ghost, there's a flowing. Those who are born of the Spirit, they are like the wind. You don't know where they're coming from or where they're going. They are off, they are like the wind. There's a breathing, there's a flowing. Rivers will flow out of your belly. The Holy Ghost, you'll be like a river that will flow. Are you guys with me? You don't know whether you go left or whether you go right. But there's a flowing that takes place. Praise and worship is not praise and worship until you are in that place. Reuben was given birth by as the tribe of Israel, which is the ability of revelation and sight. Then Simeon, is it Simeon? Yeah, then Simeon, which is the ability to hear. Then Levi, which is meaning one with God. Then Judah, which is to praise and worship. So you cannot even praise or worship God unless you have a revelation, unless you see Him with your spiritual eyes, unless you hear His voice, and unless you are in intimacy, intimate relationship with Him. Are you guys with me? So Enoch walked with God. And as he walked with God, suddenly he was not, for God took him. The word took means to be intertwined, intimate, and to become one. In the Hebrew, it means kava, to become one with God. Meaning that you carry the mind of Christ, but you become one with Him. You become one of the wind. You are born of the Spirit. And Enoch had a life, and we'll get into that later in the series. That is a type and a shadow of who we are. That you have the ability to be ascended and taken up. Are you guys with me? God no longer comes down. In the old covenant, the glory came down. In the new covenant, the glory comes out. In the old covenant, the glory came down. In the new covenant, the Bible says, Arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. How can something rise upon you? Because it's coming out of you and there's a rising that is taking place. But it tells you, Arise and shine. Do you know what happens when I worship God? I don't worship and beg Him. Oh Lord, please come into this place. I shift a dimension. I shift a person in me. Because it is not me begging him to come down. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He says, arise and shine. Meaning you stand up, you arise. When the angel came to Peter, he struck him by the hip and he says, arise to your feet. Stand up. Meaning there's a rising that must take place in your spirit. It is you that chooses to rise. Are you guys with me? So when I worship Him, I arise in me to worship Him. I don't beg Him. I am the gate. I allow the King of glory to come in. Oh, lift up your heads, O oh, your gates. And open the gates for the King of glory. Make way for the King of glory to come through. Meaning that the King of glory comes through your gates. When you choose to arise and shine for your light has come. And you make way for the King to come out of you. Not for the King to come down. Change your mind. Are you guys with me? He comes out. Say with me out. He doesn't come down. Nowhere do we worship. In fact, we want to change the songs. When it says glory come down and all this stuff, this old covenant, the new covenant, the glory comes out. 
The old covenant, you touch the glory, you died. The new covenant, you touch the glory, you lift, you healed. Are you guys with me? The old covenant, you tithe out of a fearful heart. In the new covenant, you tithe out of a cheerful heart. You see how things have shifted. Are you guys with me? So there is a river that flows out of you and it should come out of the temple. And Jesus says, if you drink of the water that I have for you, what is the water that I have for you? It is eternal life. If you drink of the water that I have for you, there will be rivers of living water coming out of your heart. There will be a fountain springing forth inside of you. Many, many people have that fountain, have died of. The fountain is no longer a spring or the river is no longer a spring and a river. It has become a reservoir. Something that just maintains and keeps and dies and rots. No longer a spring that is springing forth. Because there are things that have clogged up their minds and the devil has entered through thoughts. You are only protected by your thoughts and your heart. There are three things that covers you. A hedge that creates a hedge. And we're going to look at the life of Adam. We're going to look at the life of Job. Is it okay if I just talk to you? It's your thoughts. It's your mind. It's your heart. And it's your giving. Job's money was his, Job's riches was his hedge. Then Job's thoughts was his hedge. And Job's heart was his hedge. I'll show it to you out of scripture. Are you guys with me? Those were the things, and Satan is unable to break through a hedge. He's not allowed to. He cannot. You can have a rich man, and a recession strikes or he loses his business or whatever happens and his money becomes a defense for him can carry him for a few years then you can have a poor man both having a great relationship with God recession hits or life hits and they they have nothing money destroys them they end up, I mean, the lack of money destroys them. They end up cursing God. We see how the devil has entered into Job because his hedge was broken. Number one, his money was taken away because of his thought life that has been, that has been accessed by the enemy. Every thought that comes into your head that says to you, you're going to lose everything. Is an open door for the enemy. Or a thought that comes in and says, you're going to lose your job. Is an open door for the enemy. Or a thought that comes in that says, you are not good enough. Is an open door for the enemy. And a hedge is open for Satan to enter into. Are you guys with me? You look and answer me as if you know all this stuff. It is okay. That is what preachers have to go through. So, thoughts are powerful because... In the Garden of Eden, they communicate via thoughts. We also see, and I'm not going to get into it tonight, uh, all the animals spoke, not only the serpent, all the animals spoke. And then God shut their mouths. Where is it? Let's get into it. All the animals spoke. That is why some animals still have a voice box left. That is why a parrot can repeat what you are saying. 
That is why other animals, there are certain animals that can actually speak things. Obviously only what you are saying. Why? Because their soul capacity has been removed or has been shut down. Their consciousness. How do I know it? They had to have a soul. Because a spirit and a body births and creates a soul. I shared it to you this morning. So God never created the soul of man. And even if it does, but according to scripture, if we look at text now, the Bible says that God created the spirit of a man. Then he created, he created the body. He breathed life into the body, which is Thai, which is life. He breathed life into the body. But then it says this, and man became a living soul. So the soul was birthed and sparked by the spirit and the flesh and the life that came from God. Then a soul was birthed. So a soul was a result of the spirit and the body and the child, which is the lives, which is the energy of God. Are you guys with me? Why do you think in Eastern religions they use, they call energy chi? It's taken from the Hebrew word chai, which means life force. Are you guys with me? That life force came from God, breathed it into man. So there's an energy in you, which is not demonic. It is from God. It is the energy of power of heaven. And it birthed to the soul. And we see how even when animals spoke, because God opened up the mouth of a donkey. And the donkey began to speak about his own problems. Saying to Balaam, how can you hit me? You hurt me when you hit me like this. The donkey wasn't speaking on behalf of God. He was speaking on behalf of himself. Are you guys with me? He was speaking his own mind, his own consciousness. He was speaking his own feelings, his own will, his own emotions. So it tells you that an animal has a soul. It is just shut and God opened the mouth of the donkey there for him to speak. That is how the serpent spoke. And then God obviously also silenced it. And we can get into those things. And that is why certain animals still have voice boxes. If you look at the physiology or you look at the biology, biology and you look at just practical things. Because they once could have spoken. So when God opened the mouth of the donkey, he takes him back to the original intent. Are you guys with me? But God had to shut the mouths because he said only man should have language in this regard. Because language is the closest thing that makes you a God and puts you to the image of God. So he created and he gave language to a man, not to animals. So... We see how Satan has now entered the garden. So say with me thoughts. Let's, 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 let's uh, go there. Um, go with me to, go with me to, uh, go with me to, in fact, let's, let's first, let's just first flow. Let's go to Ezekiel 28 verse 12. Ezekiel 28 verse 12. Zanana. Let me just see. Yeah. yeah, verse 12, that's fine. Listen to the Son of Man, take up a lamentation for the King of Tyre and say to him, thus says the Lord God, you were the seal of perfection. Certainly the seal of perfection, meaning he was created perfectly, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. This is Lucifer. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. We see that he was a priest. We went into that this morning. The sardius, the topaz, and diamond. 
the battle onyx and jasper, sapphire, turquoise, and emerald with gold, the workmanship of your timbrels and pipes, meaning it was made out of musical instruments. When you would speak, if he was made out of musical instruments, there are other angels that are made out of musical instruments. So God created angels to worship him, never created man to worship him. Are you guys with me? That is why when you would hear angels speak, it will be in a musical way. Anyway, was prepared for you on the day you were created. You were the anointed cherub who covers. I established you. You were on the holy mountain of God. So Eden is the mountain of God, which is Mount Zion. You walked back and forth. I mean, the garden of God is on the mountain of Zion. Is Mount Zion. You walked back and forth in the midst of the fiery stones. You were perfect in your ways from the day that you were created, meaning you were created perfectly. This is how we know he's not speaking about the king of Tyre. So even though the prophet is saying, O king of Tyre, he shifts his language and he begins to speak about Lucifer. No man is created perfectly. So he says that you were, you were perfect in your ways from the day you were created. Until iniquity was found in you, by the abundance of your trading, the abundance of your trading, you became filled with violence within, and you sinned. Therefore, I cast you as a profane thing out of the mountain of God, and I destroyed you, O covering cherub. From the midst of the fiery stones, so are the fiery stones. So in the effort, so in, uh, uh, in the uh, effort of the priest, we had the stones, but in the, behind the effort, there was a Urim and Theorem, two stones. That they would, when the Bible says they casted lots, they would use those stones to cast. The one would light up and the other one would not. And then they would also reflect onto the effort. And there would either be a language of yes or no, or God would begin to speak. But God would only speak through the stones. And those two, Urim, the, those two stones, which is the Urim, the theorem, is suspected to be taken from the Garden of Eden, from the Tree of Life, from the fiery stones that he walked and leave the scripture on, from the fiery stones. Uh, where are we now? In the midst of the fiery stones. Next verse. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. I cast you to the ground. I laid you before kings that they might gaze at you. Does the Bible say that you are kings and priests? He said, I lay you before kings. Know your place and your identity. I laid you before kings that they might gaze at you. You defiled your sanctuaries, you mean you were priest, by the multitude of your iniquities, by the iniquity of your trading. What did Satan trade? Let's go on, next verse. Therefore I brought fire from your midst and I devoured you. He says, I took a fire that was in you and I caused the fire that was in you to devour you and I turned you to ashes upon the earth. But it says you were defiled by your trading. Are you guys with me? So there was business and trading that Lucifer did in the garden that caused him to fall because in his trade, he became defiled. Are you guys with me? That's why I always say people have to be very careful when it comes to business. Because it can put a lot of pride in a person. It was by trading that Lucifer fell. But Lucifer also tried to trade with the souls of men. That is why Jesus had to be sent to trade with the souls of men. And to pay a final price of redemption. So that he can bring many sons unto glory, but that the sins of the world will be dealt with and will be forgiven. 
which means he became a propitiation for the sins of the world, for every single person. Meaning if you walk out on the streets, if you look at a person, their sins are forgiven. It's just not activated until they believe. So they'll be judged by their sins unless they believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. That is why it is there for you to preach the gospel, which is the good news. To say, do you know that your sins are forgiven? That if you put your faith in Him, if you believe unto Him, there will be no judgment for you. Doesn't matter what you do, your sins are forgiven. Which means it is too good to be true news. Are you guys with me? Hmm. But Satan through the trading, have you seen Satan through trading, began to defile the sanctuaries and defile himself. And he was cut down meaning it was a tree, cast down. Tree is symbolic of every living thing, of every being, even yourself. That's why the Bible says that we are trees of righteousness. But now we get in now, so we're starting to see how did he enter the garden and how did he take hold of the garden and enter into Adam's mind. First of all, he came into the garden to look for precious stone and to look for trading. That is why a sword was put around the tree of life. To protect it because otherwise he would have traded with the tree of life because the Bible says there were stones and there was fruits by the tree of life. Are you guys with me? That if we eat of the fruit of the tree of life, you will have eternal life and live forever. Let me, let me, let me go somewhere. Are you guys with me? I think it is in, um, I think it is in, go with me to Genesis, uh, I think it is Genesis maybe 3, let's see, um, Genesis 3 verse 22, then the Lord said, behold, the man has become like one of us, to know good and evil. And now, lest he put out his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Now Jesus comes and he says, if you eat of my body, eat of my flesh, drink of my blood, you will be partakers of me. If you drink of the water that I have for you, There'll be springs of living water coming out of you. And you will have eternal life. Meaning you will live forever. Meaning it is God's eternal plan for man to have always lived forever. Adam and Eve was allowed to eat of the fruit of the tree of life. They chose the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and God had to shut the tree of life for a time. But He knew that He was going to send the tree of life, which is Jesus Christ, to bring an eternal redemption or called the plan of the ages to mankind so that we can again eat of the tree of life and get eternal life to live forever. Meaning that you have eaten, if you have eaten of the fruit, if you have drank from the river that is in Christ, from the rivers and the waters of life that is the gospel, you will live forever. Mm, Whether it is you're living and you're dying in this flesh, there'll be life forever. It's called the immortality of the believer. Even though I believe there are some that might not taste it. Taste death. Are you guys with me? Enoch was taken as an example and a type and shadow to show God's ultimate plan. There are people that are living in longevity and we'll call it for safety longevity. I don't believe in the doctrine of immortality where we say that uh, or where it was preached to say that everyone will live and not die in the physical body. This physical body has to go back to where it was made from. Dust have to return to dust. But there is a place of translation 
when it comes to a generation that will be like Enoch, that will be taken. I'm not speaking of the rapture. In fact, there are people that are alive right now. And this is just by word of mouth and by people that have written testimonies. There's about 30 of them that is alive right now. And, uh, and you can study it, it is there. That is living way beyond 100. When I say way, the furthest one is 300. It is documented, it is a witness. It's eyewitnesses that have seen it. So it is not um, anything. Now, whether they are, uh, whether they are uh, uh, watchers or whether they are humans, we're not exactly sure, but let's just say they are humans. But they have tapped into the tree of life. Even though we understand that eternal life, you will live forever, means that if we put this body to death, there's the immortality of the believer. And the immortality of the believer messes up the doctrine of hell, which we're not going to give you. We'll teach it in Bible school. Because there's the mortality of the unbeliever and the immortality of the believer. Are you guys with me? I'm not going to confuse you, so I'm not going to go deeper. But that is theology. So there are four views on hell. There are four views on heaven. There are four views on grace. There are four views on, uh, on salvation. There are four views on... Uh, there are four views because you have hell. Let me explain to you. That's fine. You have the traditional view of hell which means that you'll burn forever. That's the traditional held view, which is the most accurate view according to Scripture. Then there's a second view, which means... Um, perdition, I think. Which means you will go there and you will only burn a, a little bit for your sins or so, and then you'll come out and we know that is not scriptural. Are you guys with me? I think it's a Roman Catholic belief or so. Then you have another view which is universalism which is no hell. So they believe that hell was only Gehenna in the New Testament or it was only a place that Jesus was speaking about that was burning 24 hours and that said that there's no hell and universalism meaning all will be saved and we know that is also false. Are you guys with me? But then there's a fourth view that's becoming very predominant and it's not too far off from Scripture. It is just to put a thought in your mind and they call it the mercy and grace of God. It is called the mortality of the believer and the immortality of the unbeliever. It's called the nihilism. So it means that when Jesus says that you shall not perish, but have eternal life, the word perish means your consciousness to disappear. Is it okay if I just explain to you? I'm not saying this is gospel truth. I'm just giving you the four views. Are you guys with me? Same thing that we'll do with eschatology and Bible college. We'll present you the different views of eschatology. There's only one view of eschatology, one or two views that is heretical. All the other views are totally fine. It, a, a person can believe in any of those other views. It is just one or two that is heretical. Um, so, 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 nihilism says that and they're connected to a scripture where it says that your thoughts, the, when man dies, his thoughts will disappear. That's what it says. His thoughts will be destroyed and will vanish. There's a scripture like that. It'll vanish. And I, I haven't, I'm not teaching on this tonight, so I'm just giving you, I'm just throwing it out to you. But their thoughts will vanish. And it's saying it is a sign of God's mercy, meaning they'll be put into hell, but then they will be put into the lake of fire. And the moment they go into the lake of fire, the lake of fire burns everything, even the consciousness, so that the person disappears. So it is the mortality of the unbeliever, meaning there will be hell and then they will disappear. They'll just cease to exist. Where the believer will have immortality and live forever. That's just one view. I'm not saying I'm holding on to that view. So don't call me a heretic. I'm presenting to you four views. I still hold on to the traditional view, which is that hell, that is a place where, because it is the most common view, it's the most traditional view, and we see the scriptures, although annihilism is very close, and there's a lot of theologians, even people that you look up to that holds to that view, but it's a sign of God's grace and mercy. For me, either or, I believe in the immortality of the believer, that 
we should still spread the gospel because it means that you'll have immort immortality. You'll have, you will have, uh, you'll have life because um, so, so those are the different views of hell. That is why we have to preach the good news. So obviously some of them are heretical. Two of them are heretical. Two of them has a scriptural basis but one is traditional. But just to give you a little bit of thinking when it comes to, when it comes to the doctrine and the theology of hell. So how does Satan enter the garden? Where were we? We were reading, let's go to the verse where we're reading where we finished. Let's go to um, uh, Genesis 3 verse 22. So God says, let man became like one of us to know good and evil. Let us protect the tree of life lest he put his hands to the tree of life and eat and live forever. So God didn't say man cannot live forever. He just stopped it for a season because he had to stop it. Because if he didn't put a flame of a sword around the tree, Satan would be able to get to the tree through man. Because he already invaded the thoughts of man. So he occupied man. Now he can take a man and send him to the tree of life. So what did Adam do? Adam allowed Satan or Eve allowed Satan to enter her mind. Are you guys with me? In the, Adam of, and in the garden of Eden, it was spoken, words were spoken by thoughts. So when words were spoken by thoughts, the devil began to speak to Eve with her thoughts. Did God really say this? Did God really say that? We see how it comes to Jesus. The way that Adam and Eve was tempted, Jesus had to be tempted because he was the last Adam. So the devil came to him and said, did God really say, if you are the son of God, take yourself up to the pinnacle and cast yourself down. If you are the son of God. So what does Satan do? He comes into your thought realm. And he brings a suggestion that is contrary to his word and what God has spoken. And the moment you believe the satanic suggestion, he has a hedge and a gap in your hedge to enter in. Are you guys with me? So go put on the screen for me, Ecclesiastics 10 verse 8. Ecclesiastics 10 verse 8. We're not going to be long. I just want to get the word through to you. Ecclesiastics 10 verse 8. He who digs a pit will fall into it. And whoever breaks through a wall put in the King James King James he that diggeth a pit shall fall into it and who breaketh a hedge a serpent shall bite him so how did the serpent get into the garden a hedge had to be broken are you guys with me the hedge was broken because the thought life of Eve was, Eve was penetrated. How do we see this? In order to see this, we have to go to Job. Go with me to Job 1 verse 10. Job 1 verse 10. Has thou... No, no, no. It's fine. Okay. Have you made a hedge around him? Have you made, so listen, listen. Satan is saying to God, let's read from verse one. Let's read from verse one. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and that man was blameless and upright, and who feared God and shunned evil. And seven sons and three daughters were born to him. Also his possessions were 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 female donkeys, and a very large household. So that this man was the greatest of all the people of the East. Are you guys with me? Why do Christians want to be poor? If you have a desire to be rich, it is a godly desire in you. If you have a desire to have power, it is a godly desire in you that God has put in there. Satan comes and tells you, you cannot, it's evil to think you want to be rich. Do you know why people don't have money? Because they think it's evil to be rich. 
Am I getting through to some people? I'm trying to break through to your mind. I don't care if you earn a hundred rand an hour or five thousand rand an hour. What I do know, it is not God's will for somebody to be on minimum wage. If Job was the greatest of all in the East, meaning he was the richest of all, what is wrong with us? Are you guys with me? You should have an innate desire in you. You know, we have a thing with business people every Monday, Tuesday, Monday. Second, every second Monday with business people, I want to encourage you to join us a private Zoom. Every second Monday. The only one I couldn't make was last week uh, because we, have, we were in a place with no signal, but otherwise I'll take every single one except in the, um, except in, uh, during the conference. And uh, those who are online, you say want to join it, you cannot unfortunately not join it unless your business is dedicated to the vision of encounter. And you support the vision of encounter, then you can join it. And uh, that is the only reason. Otherwise, we're not, we're not there to, 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 to help. Uh, we're, no, no, no. We're not there to cast our pearls before the swine of somebody that is not invested into the vision. Are you guys with me? I fully believe that God has called every Christian to be rich. It's not a false doctrine. It's not prosperity preaching. Prosperity preaching means that you are, you are spiritual to the degree of or you have God's acceptance to the degree of your prosperity. That's not what we're preaching. We are preaching and saying that God has made you kings and priests. He has made Adam rich in the garden because he had every precious stone. He has made Job the greatest of all. Are you guys with me? And Job's, Job's, Hedge, Job's hedge was this. Go for to Ecclesiastes 7 verse 12. Your hedge is one part this. For wisdom is a defense as money is a defense. Are you guys with me? I hear these preachers preaching today and they're preaching against us and preaching against us and all these false prophets. To them, anything is false that they don't approve of. Okay, so um, don't be one of those. They're just into prosperity preaching and this and that. No, no, no. We're here to tell people that God has blessed them, that God wants you to have a prosperous life. If you can't get a smile on your face with the presence of God, I tell you now, if you get a bit large check into your account, you'll get a smile on your face at least. So we're going to try to get a smile on your face in some how. But it is not good to have a smile on your face only with the presence of God and not in riches. Because where His glory is, there is gold. If God has truly put His presence upon you, you will be blessed and you will be favored. Are you guys with me? And it is not God that makes you rich it is God that blesses you and gives you the power to make you rich but he's not the one that makes you rich you are the one that makes you rich but you can only operate in your ability in the garden okay are you guys with me let me let me explain this when Adam and Eve was put out of the garden they went from tending the garden to toiling. They went from rich to minimum wage. Because they were taken out of their environment. If you take a fish out of water, it will die. But if you put it in the water, it can be a shark. It can kill you. It can be the greatest predator. If you take a lion right now and you put it in the middle of New York City, Times Square, do you know that the lion will not kill anyone? Why, you know, I said this in Greece, also people are silent. I don't know why. If you take a lion and you put it in Times Square, New York right now, it will not kill people. Because it is taken out of its environment that empowers it. And it will be afraid and run away. The moment you are taken out of your environment, you lose your ability. Your ability is still in you, but it is not activated. It is not effective. 
and you cannot operate. So anybody taken out of their environment will look like an idiot or will look foolish. But put somebody in the correct environment and they'll operate. Your gift requires the glory and the presence of God because Eden was its original environment. The original environment for your spirit was a place where you could rule and reign. That is why your original environment is to be in a place where you can be rich. You will only thrive in your spirit when you realize I have this property, I have this land, I have this money in my account. You will all of a sudden see a smile on your face. You will speak like a king. That's why I don't care how little you have. You do your best to own something because God has called you to be a land lord. In other words, a land God, a God of your land, a Lord of your land. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Are you guys with me? So Satan, you know, I was speaking to somebody in Krugersdorp and they said, do you know how the banks make it impossible for young people to own property now? You can go get a car of three million, but you can't go get a property of three million. You can walk into any dealership and get any car that you want, but you cannot get property because the devil knows the moment you have, you have a car, you are a loser. You're, more, you're poorer than what you were when you went in there. But the moment you get property, you begin to own land and every covenant that God has given and every promise that God has given to man had property and land connected to it. Almost every covenant inheritance was land. Are you guys with me? Abraham, choose the land that you want. Uh, 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 Lot chose the best part. Abraham said, it's fine. I will take the part that is not the best, but God will make it the best. So get out of the mindset that God wants you to be poor because it's only damaging your children and your children's children. And you'll cause your children and your children's children to curse you one day. Are you guys with me? That is why the Bible says it is a blessed man who leaves an inheritance for his children's children with wisdom. But uh, 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 uh. Satan wants to keep a person poor. So we see how Job's defense was money. So with him money. So let's carry on. Let's go to the scripture where Job was. Zadono said I Job 1, I think we're Job 1 verse 3 or something. Go there. So his possessions were great. He was the greatest of all the people of the East. Next verse. And his sons would go and feast in their houses, each on his appointed day. So all his sons had houses and they had feasts in their houses. The man was wealthy. Are you guys with me? And would send an invite their three sisters to eat and drink with them. Go, it was when, what does it say? So it was when the days of feasting had to run their course that Job went, would send and sanctify them. And he would rise early in the morning and offer burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus Job did this regularly. Do you know how you will serve God when you have money? I'm just reading the Bible to you. Don't be offended. Don't leave the church. Don't go to the news programs and say you are now a victim of Encounter Church, which some of you are doing and some of you have done. That we are kidnapping your children, brainwashing your children, doing this, and you're going to go to news programs. Please don't be one of those. Why is it so silent in the place? Or you're not used to persecution? I think we had about four shows contacting us now already. Four TV shows. All white people. <laughs> the one is even saying, you are the main guest. I'm like, I'm not even going to answer you. Why? Because Satan doesn't attack his own.
South Africa hates prophets. That's why she killed all the prophets. South Africa hates prophets. So I can choose to become a pastor and leave the prophet. But then I'm going to have to answer to God. So it has to be restored somewhere, somehow. But South Africa hates prophets. They really hate prophets. Because they don't understand how prophets operate. But you have to operate, you have to be in your environment to be wealthy, to rule and to reign. Your environment is the glory. Your environment is Eden. Your environment is where the land is, where the best gold is. Can I just talk to you like this? Can we, we're just opening up Revelation. We'll finish just now. Don't worry, next week is conference. We'll be laying hands, we're prophesying, we're preaching. But I just want to open up the Garden of Eden to you. Because people don't know Eden. They don't know that they are a walking Eden. Tap into this and receive the favor of the Lord upon you. That when you walk, that you know that the anointing, but where does it start? You know, people want business and they want jobs and they want all these things and it's all self-focused, but where does it start? It starts with a purpose, meaning souls. How many souls am I winning? Then it gets to business. Then God begins to bless your business. Then He begins to bless your finances. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. When the disciples followed Jesus, He says, go and catch a fish. Go and get souls. Because in the mouth of souls is a coin to pay your tax. So when you fulfill the mandate and the purpose to win souls to disciples, I will make and I will meet your needs. I will bless you. I will prosper you. But we try to put our needs. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things. Say with me, all these things shall be added unto you. Meaning all these cars, all these houses, everything you need will be given unto you. But what do you do? Focus upon the kingdom. What is the kingdom? Focus upon the purpose making disciples of all nations. What is nations? If I look at my street, who can I win in my street? If I look at my neighborhood, who can I win in my neighborhood? If I look at my business, who can I win in my business? Are you guys with me? Who can I lead to the Lord? Who can I disciple? How do I disciple? I simply say, follow me. People think, have you seen? People think we have to go through all these glasses and all these things. Jesus made it so simple. He said, follow me. That's it. Discipleship is followership. That's all. Are you guys with me? Discipleship is followership. If you're going to have somebody to follow you, you can bring them to where you are at. And you will feel and you'll be shocked by the anointing that will come on you. Because now you've taken an empty vessel. I'm not saying look for somebody in the church to disciple them. I'm saying go and win a soul. Maybe you only get it right with one. And then you bring that one to church. And you disciple that one. And when God sees that you're faithful with one, He gives you another one. Or He gives you the ability to do it with two. And then He increases your capacity. And He increases your grace. So how does a person grow in grace? Paul said these words. He says, we speak to those who is in our measure, in our sphere. But we hope that we can extend our sphere by extending through you to reach other groups as well. That when we can reach them, our grace is increased. So God increases your grace, not by somebody throwing a mantle on you, but by you increasing in those who follow you. And you make them like you. Are you guys with me? A disciple is a student of a teacher. Somebody that just follows and teaches and do. But people are worried. My finances are not blessed. My business is not blessed. They come to church with a mindset 
that everything is falling apart. They're not coming to a church with a mindset, what can I learn to give out on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday? Okay, I got my e-group coming up on Wednesday. I got four or eight people in my e-group. How can I get them to be on fire? How can I uh, get to them to, uh, how can I get to more people in my e-group? Who can I minister to? How can I get to church to be equipped so that I can go out and bring more to church? Because otherwise, what am I in? I am a glorified in here church. Are you guys with me? And by the way, TV shows only come off to people who make a difference. When I had somebody who knew somebody who gave them some other names, guess what they said? There's nothing about them. Are you guys with me? So, when the church is persecuted, she grows and grows. Meaning, that persecution will never destroy a church, otherwise it was not of God. Persecution makes a church grow. And with all the things that is coming to us, it is like not even bringing one ounce of fear in me. Because we learned with the first one, it was a feeble attempt at, you know, what was happening. So, but the question is, how many have I gotten saved? How has the devil entered my life? So we thought to life. So we thought. So he comes in by thoughts. Let's, 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 let's carry on. I'll close off now. Don't worry. I'll close off now. So Proverbs 23 verse 7. And it's not even a message tonight. I'm just giving you, dropping some things for you. Proverbs 23 verse 7. For as he thinks in his heart, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So the devil accesses through thoughts. He came in by Eve through thoughts. He came in by Job. The fact that Bob, I can, I, I'm not going to carry on. Let's, let's carry on reading. Let's go to Job 1. Where we were. Job 1 verse 5, I think. That I can just at least close off with this. They were feasting. Next verse. So it says that Job did offerings. Next verse. Now there were a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan also came among them. And the Lord said to Satan, from where do you come from? So Satan answered, Lord, and said, from going to and fro on the earth and from walking back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? He says, I knew you went to his house because you walked back and forth on the earth. And Job was the greatest of all. So have you considered him, my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth? A blameless and upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil. And it just happened that it was a rich man who was the greatest of all. And why do I throw this out? Because it is the mood of the Spirit to try to say that prosperity is not evil. Money is not evil. Are you guys with me? Money used in a selfish way is evil, but money used for the purpose of the kingdom of God, it is not evil. And Job was the greatest, and it was his defense. Why? If a recession hits a poor man, as I said it earlier, they cannot do anything. But if a recession hits somebody that has finances, the finances becomes a defense. Let me give you an example. You have a poor man and a rich man standing by the street, and it starts raining. And as it starts raining, the rich man has a driver come and pick him up in whatever car it might be, a Mercedes or whatever it might be, a uh, Bentley, a Rolls Royce, whatever. But he gets in and he sits comfortably and the rain can no longer hit him because it is hitting a defense. The poor man that doesn't have anything, what is happening, the rain is hitting him. There's no covering, there's no defense. 
So the Bible says there are few things that is your covering and your defense. It says that your wife is your covering. It says that money is a defense. It says that sons is a covering. It says that garments is a covering. So Satan wants to remove your clothing. So he removed the garments and the clothing and the mantle of Adam. That's why Adam suddenly realized he was naked. Because he had a clothing, a mantle, a breastplate of righteousness on. He was not sin conscious. But the moment the law entered in, the moment Satan began to come in and question, sin entered into Adam. And he saw that he was naked. And shame was coming upon him because he was no longer the righteousness of God. That is why he had to send his son that was the sinless lamb to be slain for us. So that he can once and for all make an entryway into the holy of holies. The Bible says once and for all. Meaning that he only once made it that when you are saved you cannot lose it. Are you guys with me? That a, a way was made into, entry into the into access into the Holy of Holies. Once and for all, a sacrifice was sacrificed. And Hebrews chapter number 6 verse 4 says it's, it's impossible. Uh, it cannot come down again. Go through a sacrifice again. So it is impossible for you to lose your salvation. Because Christ cannot come down to earth again, become the lamb again, and die for your sins again, and become the perfect sacrifice again. So He made a way once and for all. So the moment you say yes to eternal life, and you believe on your heart, and you put faith in the blood, with no requirement, but the moment you believe it, you will live forever. You will have eternal life, not temporal life, which means it is a done deal. It is sealed unto redemption. It is sealed unto eternity. Are you guys with me? You know, I got brought up, have you seen it? I got brought up in such a confused gospel. Our Guys didn't, charismatics didn't know what they were preaching. They were saying, oh, you know, when you're adopted, you're no stronger than a son, you can never unadopt. And then the next week they preached and said, you can lose your salvation. They were confused. So, money is a defense. Your wife is a defense. Sons is a defense. Noah's sons covered him. And they changed. What did they do? The covering was a garment. Many Christians have lost their garments in the spirit. Are you guys with me? That is why the devil can put thoughts into their heads. Of shame and embarrassment. Because they've let go of their garments. It's time to get clothed in righteousness. How do I do it? Getting into the glory of God. Getting into the presence of God. As I spend time with Him, what happens? The idea of God comes on me. The covering, which is how many of you have worshipped or you spend time in prayer? You should have. And maybe it's two hours. To, all of a sudden, it just feels like there's a vibration on you. It is the idea, the mantle, the covering. It is the power of God that rests on you. It is the Holy Spirit that comes on you with power. It is the Holy Spirit on you. Are you guys with me? Not the Holy Spirit in you. It is the anointing upon. It is the covering and the mantle coming from heaven down. It is in a place of ascension. It is to clothe you so that you can ascend. You cannot ascend outside of having the correct garment. So the anointing comes down. It rests upon you. It is the idea. It is the mantle. Not God. It is the mantle that comes. It rests upon you. It clothes you. So that now you are not sin conscious. Your righteousness conscience. That should anyway be there 24 hours. Not just when you're in the presence of God. But it helps getting in the presence of God. Because the blood washes our conscience of dead works. 
So now you no longer think about your sins. All you think about is the presence, which means now your eyes are focused upon the author and the finisher of our faith. That looking upon Jesus, the author and the finisher, but now as you're like that, you're clothed in a clothing. So now you can go into a high place you can ascend, which means you're walking at a different height. And that is how you access ascension. That is how you access the counsel of God. This is how you access or you trample upon serpents and scorpions and upon all the power of the enemy. This is where the oil pours out rock, uh, uh, the rock pours out oil for you in the heights and the depths of the realms of the earth of the spirits. It is in the high place where He pours out oil for you. So you require to ascend, but He's waiting for a change of garments. Are you guys with me? Jacob, have you seen Jacob, there was a situation with Bethel. And he said to his family and so on, he says, let's go there, but we cannot go there. We have to change our garments because it's holy ground. So he says, before we can even step on that holy ground, change garments. Moses, this is holy ground. Take off your sandals and step onto holy ground. But you have to change, take off your sandals. You have to change a garment. Elijah, taking the idea, the mantle, covered his face and his head. He took a garment and covered him. Even God is clothed in garments of praise. Are you guys with me? He's clothed in garments of vengeance, the Bible says. Which means that even God has garments. The Bible says in Isaiah 6 verse 1, one of His garments is His glory. That in the temple, the train of His robe shall fill the temple. Meaning His garment shall fill the temple. And as His garment shall fill the temple, you will know He is there. So how do we know God is there? By looking at His garments. Who did the lady with the issue of blood touch? She didn't touch Jesus. She touched His garments. What did Potiphar's wife grab when she grabbed Joseph? She grabbed His garments. What did the sons, what did the brothers of Joseph do when they threw him in the pits? They took his garment and his coat of dreams because they know if they remove his garment, they remove his authority. The devil knows if he can come and whisper into your head, he breaks the hedge. When the hedge is broken, the serpent bites. When the serpent bites, it's because the garment has been laid down. So how do you get into the presence of God? You shift garments. How do you put on, you deal with the spirit of depression and heaviness? You put on a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. So how do I deal with depression? I put on praise upon me. Even if I don't feel like it, I begin to clap my hands and I praise Him. I put on a garment. Then the Bible says, put on the Lord Jesus Christ as a garment. Everything in the spiritual realm is garments. Everything accessed in the spiritual realm is garments. Even when Adam and Eve sinned, you can have this, it's even when Adam and Eve sinned, God had to make them a garment to cover them. God had to make them a garment. Are you guys with me? So how do I shift? How do I? What is a hedge? A hedge is a garment. A hedge is a garment that is over you. It is your mantle. The only way I can have my garment and my mantle is by doing what the purpose of God is. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Is my garment. The Spirit of the Lord has covered me. The Spirit of the Lord is my hedge. And He has anointed me because I preach the gospel. I cast out devils. He has anointed me to do this. What has He anointed you to do? Jesus gave one commandment. Go and make disciples. Are you guys with me? Go and make disciples. Whatever it is in your workplace, in your business. I'm not even saying it must be an e-group. Just who are following your words and becoming more like Christ because of you. Who can you minister the words of life and give the waters of life to? Who can you minister and give 
the fountains, the river of life to, so that the river can increase. Because the further you go out of the temple, meaning the more people you reach, the deeper you get into the river. The more gifts will be given to you. Gifts are not given only for believers. It is to build the church. It is to establish the church. It is when unbelievers come into the church that gifts can be ministered unto them. Gifts are weapons in the Spirit. So if you have a gift of healing, it is a weapon in the Spirit. It is used to lead somebody to the Lord. When you have the gift of prophecy, it is a weapon in the Spirit. It is to strengthen the church also. Are you guys with me? So gifts are given, but if I don't use it, I lose it. If I don't use the anointing, I lose the anointing. So when we pray, those who feel they need a fresh touch and you have the whole church coming out, guess what? Because they lost the anointing. The anointing upon, not the anointing within. The anointing within will abide with you forever. Are you guys with me? But unfortunately, the anointing within is not the anointing we feel. The anointing upon is the anointing we feel. So you need to feel great, feel good. Joyce Meyer wrote a book, what was the name? Feel great, look, look great, feel good, something like that. And that's all good. But there's one thing that will make me look, feel, or look great or feel good. It is the anointing that is on me. Not do this one thing and do this confessions and no, no, no. It is the anointing, the Spirit of the Lord. Please, I'm not speaking about you against Joyce Meyer. I'm just using our book title. Are you guys with me? The anointing that rests upon me, why? To do His purpose. The anointing will make you see. The anointing will make you see your future. The anointing will give you life. The anointing will cause you to pray for people and rivers of water will come out of you. But it depends, are you doing what you're called to do? What is the calling? Say with me, nations. Say discipling nations. Not discipling a neighborhood only, but discipling nations. Meaning if Jesus says, go and make disciples of all nations, that was not just given to some, it was given to everybody to go and fulfill it. Are you guys with me? The only way Jesus is coming back is not coming back after a great revival. That is the wrong gospel that has been preached. He's coming back when the church is a full mature man. Perfect. Every part working together. Without spot, without blemish. A perfect man grown up. So when the church occupies and takes over and multiplies and grows, Jesus is coming back for that church. He's not coming back for a once of revival or the kingdom of God being preached throughout the... Oh, no, 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 no. That has already been done in AD 70. He's speaking about the, 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 the church becoming a full mature man, taking over and occupying the world. How do I do it? I invade my business. I invade my workplace with the idea, the mantle, the spirit of God upon me, my garment upon me. Meaning, what is your garment? So why do you come to church? We come to church to get, a, to get a, our garments shifted so that when we can go out, there's no gap in the hedge. There's no thought or suggestion coming into our heads where the enemy can come in because how did he take Job's life? Job said, the thing that I feared came upon me. So the enemy put thoughts of fear into his head and he grabbed that fear and it became part of his heart. And what he feared came upon him. What you think you will become as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. You are a product today and a sum total of your thoughts of yesterday. Stand your feet, stand your feet wherever you are. Are you guys with me? So there's so much to preach on Eden. But we've done two weeks of it. So with the rivers of living water. I'm not going to go much later. It's already almost eight o'clock. Just raise your hands to the Lord. I just want to see what he does. La rosca avrikena mambriskete. Le rosa nena sede. Begin to pray. Begin to, not out of your mind, out of your spirits, out of your belly. Brash kavreka nos kavreka na marodos kade. Laro osekaya. Brash kerede le bena maskote la baya. Kelo sekena maya. Kelas kote na maya. Brash kerede la baya. 
Pera conosce de le bene man brosche da la baia le rasco de le bene ma carodosce che te la batina maia che na rosca re de le breca nosca taia papa pray 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 la raha caso dai let the atmosphere of heaven saturate this place let the river flow out of your belly let a river flow out of your heart let rivers of living water flow out of your temple let rivers of life be completely drunk in the river be immersed in the river be saturated with the river don't stand ankle deep don't stand knee deep don't stand waist deep be completely immersed a river that is vast a river that is huge that is too big to cross la brusca redelede Les cate kelabaya, les cate kelabaya, le brasco de le bena mambroske de le baya, le brasco de le bena mambroske de le bena maya, ah brasca re de le bena maya, brisca daya. So what did I do tonight? I rebuked the lack of hunger, so that you can have hunger. We're dealing with familiarity, so that rivers can flow out of your belly. So let it flow. La rusca abrite nosca da. Don't wait for the band or musical instruments. Let it flow out of your belly. Let it flow out of your belly. Get into the spirits, not into the natural. Once you are in the spirit, you begin to see things. You begin to see the impossible. You begin to see the invisible. Barros carre de le bene, mambros que de le bene. I don't hear any hunger in this place. I hear your spirits being flat. I don't hear your spirits being full. Don't beg God. Express God. Don't beg Him. Don't beg God. Express God. Don't try to get filled. Release. It is not about being filled with the Holy Ghost. It is about releasing the Holy Ghost. It is about releasing rivers out of your belly. La rosca reke ne va brosca breda na maia. O brasca re de le bena ma kalodoske de le bena ma brosca de le baia. Le carosca re de le breka na ma brosca de le baia. Barosca re de le bena ma sco de le bena ma. Brasco de le bena ma. Peradoske de le bena ma brioske de le bena ma. Zedana zedere. Brascare de le breda nosca de na mai, breca da la brasco te que de le bena mambrosca de la baia, asco te que na mambrosca de le baia. Here now, oh. Braca na mosca de le bena mambrosca de de le bena mai, resca relevando ca de na mambrosca de aia, reca asco te que na mai. Come on, let the river flow. 
la rusca de Levena Maia, Jirie. Nu se ca broșca na mambresca de le baia, breca dolodo se ca de le bena mambresca de la baia, era nasca de le bena ma, era nasca de la bradios ca de le bena ma, braca rados ca de le bena mambrios ca de le baia, breca dolodo se ca de le bena ma, bresca re de le bena mambrios ca de le bena ma, ca la rados ca de le bena mambrios ca de le bena ma, breca dos ca te ca le bena mambros ca taia. Let us, let us, let us stir it up, stir it up, stir it up, stir it up. Brez care de le bena mam brios care de le bena maia, reca dos care de le bena maia, breda na maia, se se da na. Le bras care de le bena mam bros care de le bena maia. Le broska de le bena mam broska de le bena maia. There we go. Only now are you beginning to pray and stir up. Baroska re de le bena mam broska de le bena maia. I need to feel the waters being stirred. I need to fear and see the angels stirring the waters. I need to see the waters being stirred. I need to see the pool of Siloam being stirred. Brasko re de le bena mam broska de le bena. Pesca te queda mambrios que re de le bena mambros que taia, reca los que breda na mambrios que taia, lesca te caia, lesca de le baia, brosca re de le bena maia, resca de le bena mambrios que de le bena maia, resca de le bena mambros que de le bena ma, reca los que de le bena mas que taia, zebra asco e canaia, que 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 asque te, bros que de na mambros que taia, esa de naia. Yes, I don't know second. Braska a break it in a man, broska de da maia. Brose. Touch, 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 touch. Broske. Se canoska break it. Se canoska te. Broska break it. Breska break it in a mask te ken. Se canoska. Breska break it. Bradonuska breka na mambrios ke de lebe na maia. Broska re de lebe na maia na dronuska ta. Bresa na ese. Braska aluska te ke na maia. Broska re de lebe na mambros ke ta. Kelos ke de. Kelos ke ta ya mbres ke de. Bras kadena maia, bros kadena be. Se kas kadena maia, sa kos kabreda na mam brios kadena. Fair, Jesus me. Bros kadena mam bros kadena baia, res kadena be na mam brios kadena be. Le bras kadena be na mam brios kadena baia, we bros kadena be na mam brios kadena maia. Sa bros kadena be na maia. Sekana mam broska re de le bena mam. Sekana, se broska de le bana mam breska da. We swear on your faces, no depression. I don't want to ask a thing no more. Se broska de le bena mam. Se broska re de le bena mam broska de le bena mam. Broska de le bena mam broska de le bena mam. Se brada nas kete, le bros kare de le bena mam bros kete de baia, les kate kina mam bros kate breda na maia, breda na mas kete de le bena maia, se bras kete de le bena mam rodos kate bre, mas kete, sanos kate kina mas kete de baia, baia. Let it 
Just play, just play strings, push string. Le raska areke no mambreda.
Raise your hands to the Lord. Raise your hands to the Lord. Do you know that song, Out of My Belly?
Raise your hands, raise your hands. I want you to receive it wherever you are. Aska breke revre donoske dele breke da mam broska reda. Remember, as you have your hands, as you have your hands raised, it's a spiritual thing. The river is a spiritual thing. It's not in your mind. Many tapped into it. Some kind of like still looked around, don't understand. They're in their minds. You're not in the river. The Spirit hasn't covered you, hasn't flooded you, hasn't flooded your soul. You have to learn to receive and heal and give over. As you are standing like this, just focus on him. Just want to say three things as you're focusing on him. Job's defense was three things. It was his mind, his thoughts, it was his heart, and it was his money. The devil could get him to stop giving to God, affected the hedge. It was his thoughts that brought fear in. And he said, the very thing I feared came upon me. You know, in the Garden of Eden, everywhere from Genesis to Revelation, there's always something we cannot touch that belongs to God. In Genesis, it was the tree of knowledge. In the middle of the garden, not cannot touch it. It belongs to God. Moses couldn't get to the burning bush, it belonged to God. It was holy ground. The ark, uh, the temple, the holy of holies, not anyone could just enter. It is holy. It belongs to God. Then we get to the tithe. The tithe is holy. It belongs to God. Shifted over into the New Testament, Hebrews chapter number 7. As we give to a high priest, we give to men on yet. It belongs to God. What does it do? It covers, it creates a hedge. The Bible says that once we give, it rebukes the devourer. So it brings a double blessing upon a person. It doesn't cause a double curse because the curse, he became a curse for us on the tree. 
But when we give, it's a double blessing that comes and it's a hedge of protection. Giving to God is an insurance against attacks that the enemy wants to bring. Giving to God is something you can always call upon. Giving to God is something you can always refer to. When you are in a time of trouble, you can say, but God, I did this, one, two, three. I need you to deliver me out of this. And a hedge of protection comes. A lot of people become rich without the blessing. And if you reach without the blessing, money begins to become a curse to a person. But when you have the blessing of the Lord, you become rich. But we don't seek, we don't give to receive the blessing. We give because we are already blessed. I need you to understand this. You give because you are blessed. You don't give to get blessed. The order is wrong. When I give to get blessed, I operate out of law. That is why I never get blessed. But if I give because He blessed me, I now move in the realm of grace in giving. And I receive much more. I go beyond the tithe. I give because I am blessed. I give because He made me a blessing. I give because I know I am. I serve a God. I am the child, the son, the daughter of a, God, of a king who owns the cattle on a thousand hills and the silver and the gold. That my inheritance with the Lord is great. That I have spiritual blessings. So I give out of a realm of blessing with a cheerful heart. What do we do right now? We worshiped. But we worshiped in the spirits. We worshipped with, 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 with intimacy, so we created an altar. When an altar is created, it is good to give. You know, a lot of times we do the giving in the middle of praise and worship and it's okay. But many times I try now to do it during a service or after a service at a place where an altar is created. Because in the Spirit, when you give into an altar in a moment of time, or in a moment of a service, there's a reaping that can take place because of the spiritual dynamics that is taking place in that service. So what has happened? We worshiped. We built an altar. We created an altar. We created an altar. So when we give into this atmosphere, you are the place of faith. When you give, I'm not here to preach even on giving. I just want to encourage you that it is time to give. I want you to give out of the fact that you are blessed. When you give out of the fact that you are blessed, you now proclaim you are blessed. When you proclaim you are blessed, it is the blessing of the Lord that makes one rich and adds no sorrow. When I give because I want to get blessed, I actually proclaim I am not blessed. That is why I don't get rich. So when you give, give out of a place to say, I give because I am blessed. The devil cannot touch a blessing. I want you to understand the devil cannot steal a blessing. One of the stones that was not given to him was the stone of God, which means good favor and blessing. Are you guys with me? The one thing Satan doesn't have is a blessing. He cannot bless you. Only God can bless you. Every good and perfect gift comes from the Father above. Satan doesn't have it in him to bless anyone. He cannot bless you with a spiritual gift and he cannot bless you with a blessing. It is the blessing of the Lord that makes one rich. So when I give out of my blessing, what am I doing? I'm decreeing and declaring and establishing that I am the blessed of the Lord. I am the blessed of God. And the devil can never touch a blessing. And people are attracted to the blessing. Are you guys with me? People are attracted to the blessing. If you're ready to give right now, wherever you're standing, and those online, if you're ready to give, you'll see the envelopes in front while your chair. I want to encourage you to take an envelope if you have cash or use the snap scan, use Zapper, the banking details that is on, and credit cards in the back. 
And while you're busy giving or so, I want you to lift up once you're ready. I want you to lift up your phone, by the way, that if you give by phone or lift up the envelope, if you're giving into an envelope that is in front by the chair, on the envelope is all these details to scan also. If you're giving by credit card, lift up your credit card. But I want to pray for you. We give not when we are blessed. When and We don't give, or let me say it like this, we don't give in order to receive a blessing and we don't give only to, when we are blessed in the sense that when we think we have money. We give out of principle. The principle are that God has blessed us and because He blessed us, we give and then we reap on that reward we got. When the enemy sees somebody that is blessed, you see, the favor of God rests upon somebody who carries the blessing of the Lord. The blessing is a strange thing. It attracts everything. It attracts favor. It attracts goodness. It attracts finances. It attracts the glory of God. The blessing attracts people. The blessing attracts everything to a person. It is the blessing. When God blessed, God didn't give finances to people in the Bible. He blessed them. He blessed Abraham, and guess what? Abraham became rich. He blessed Isaac, Isaac became rich. He blessed Jacob, he blessed David, he blessed Solomon. What do you require? The blessing. But the Bible says, you are blessed. So when you give, it's a declaration to say, I am the blessed of God. So if you're ready to give, just lift up your seat. Let me pray for you. Those online, let us know if you're giving. Let us know if you have given. May God bless you. I see people saying, seed sown, seed sown. May God bless you. May He bless you in every area. So into this altar. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ. May the anointing of the Holy Spirit touch their finances. May the devil know and people know that they are the blessed of God. That they are a blessing and they're giving out of their blessing. In Jesus' mighty name. I pray for your hand and your yod upon their lives. I pray that you'll cover and protect them. I pray for the adir, the hedge, the covering, the garment, the mantle, the authority, the hedge to cover them. I pray that there'll be no gap in their hedge for Satan to come in. They're not coming through their mind, their thoughts, their fear, their hearts, or their finances. Bless them that their money can become a defense for them. Bless them in a time of recession, I pray. In Jesus' mighty name. Bless those who are watching online and giving into this anointing and giving into this altar. Bless those who are giving into this atmosphere that is created. May the blessing of God touch their lives. And by the declaration as they give, may they declare to the devil that they are blessed. I pray for a prophecy reward. I pray for the prophetic reward to come upon their lives. In Jesus' mighty name. We give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. Amen. Amen. You can come forward and come and give. Thank you so much. You can also go to the back with credit cards if you want to give via that avenue. a second offering which is the vision fund and you all know what that is for I'm not going to stretch that out um, if you're ready to give right now give any amount you don't even have to put into the basket you can also give via this this ways given to the vision funds I know some people are committed to give monthly into that uh, some with big amounts some with large amounts and obviously you know the vision I'm not going to repeat it over and over you know uh, the projects kind of like what we're busy with we'll be revealing it to the church very soon and it is a huge project it's a very big project we can only do it we cannot do it outside of the grace 
of God. We cannot do it outside of the mandate and the purpose of God. We cannot do it outside of that. We can only do it with His blessing. And uh, He will spark in your heart to give towards that. So that is the project that we're busy with. Um, and the one is 100 million. And, um, you know, that will be revealed to you probably in about three or four months. We're just waiting for certain things to be finalized and that we can reveal the whole project to you. Those who are watching online, you can give into this. This is a project that's going to be globally uh, touching people, globally affecting global uh, ministry globally. Uh, it is huge. It is something big for South Africa. So, uh, and this has to be done within three years maximum from now. So if you're ready to give, if you, the Lord is laying on your heart, you can also give via that avenue. Let's go ahead. Let's take up the vision fund or you can give via just using the details. just over two or three people I want to just give a word I don't want the church to become familiar if you're familiar you're not going to read from the gift um, you're not going to read from the gift let me just hear what the Lord is saying marks of a prophet is not saying what has happened that is the word of knowledge or what is happening the marks of a prophet is usually predicting something and then it comes to pass are you guys with me the main marks of a prophet so it is uh it is um, a lot of people want to know all this information. We can do it and we have done it. But I mean, you know, if you have a church that is your church and you've been with them for how many years, I mean, what information are you going to give them outside of God really giving something supernatural of something that has happened or say, and, and that can happen and we can do it. But uh, prophecy is foretelling and foretelling and forthcoming. So... It speaks the future, it creates the future, and then it manifests the future, forthcoming. Forthtelling is creating the future, foretelling foretells the future, forthcoming manifests the future when it comes into manifestation. Just give me five minutes or so, then we will close off. Just five minutes or so.
faces don't look like you looking for prophecy, but that is okay. Can you stand for me? So what is your name? Sorry? Chabaloni. Chabaloni. Are you here with, are you, you're not married or? You're married? Is your wife here? Sorry? Oh, okay. Okay. Are you here alone? Tonight? Okay. Can I prophesy over you before? When? When? Three weeks ago. Oh, okay. Oh, yes, I can remember. Okay. I can't remember what I said. I just want to tell you what I heard the God, about what the ear the Lord said to me. You know, but you were dressed differently. You were, your wife was with you here. Oh, okay. Okay. I just, this is what I heard the Lord say to me. Just as I said, I didn't know it was you who I prophesied over, but the Lord said to me, tell him that there's turnaround coming when it comes in business. Because the Lord saw you doing something very specific. I see you doing something very specific. A sacrifice where the Lord is saying, tell him, I'm sending a breakthrough and I'm sending an angel of breakthrough coming to him. And it's going to cause a shift and a change and it's going to turn the business situation around. For I looked at somebody and I'm seeing a person that is trying to, that is trying to, to do something or that there is a person that is going to want to bring hindrance or is bringing hindrance. And come stand here for me. This one that is bringing hindrance, it's like, I saw the Lord saying to me, I will remove one and I'm going to remove the obstacle out of what is happening because I saw a contract being limited and I saw papers being limited with a, what do you do? I, I meant to logistics. I own a truck. There's a contract or contracts that don't want to come through. And there's individual or individuals that is limiting this. Stretch out your hands, church, and begin, just begin to pray. I'm seeing letters in front of me. And I want us to pray instantly tonight that God will bring breakthrough for you. That this thing will be overturned because I saw something connected to Africa and I saw a connection to Africa that is going to be expanded but I'm seeing a name or I'm seeing this letters I'm not sure if it is if it is like a show or call or something so I'm seeing I'm seeing a name in front of me right now when it comes to business so, and I'm seeing this limitation. It is like either K or CH or something like that, Charles or Cole or Charles or something like that, that I'm seeing in front of me, that the Lord is saying, I'm removing an individual. And there will be a testimony that is coming from you. Because the enemy has not only tried to stop a contract, but even tried to stop uh, the not only a contract because there's not only one business supposed to be one but there's supposed to be two businesses sorry sorry I'm also into a ministry I'm nine years into a ministry right now into ministry yes um, that's also what the Lord was confirming of the Lord happened. I went to a business for these three weeks. A lot, of everything is a new thing is coming. Even today, the whole of my suspension out, out of nowhere, I need to put a new one. For the for the past three weeks, my truck has been standing. I'm like God. It's problem. It's new, but things are just going. 
but there are a lot of things that I cannot speak when it comes to a ministry. Comes to ministry. Uh, yeah, well, I can't. Uh, maybe if you have they, a, just tell me, do you have a church? I have a church. Wait, 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 wait. Free State, in okay. Bethlehem. Uh, Why you? Yeah. Hence, I'm saying when it comes to a ministry, if the grace is there for me, maybe if I can, maybe sometimes meet the man of God and explain a lot has happened to a point where I, I nearly like been discouraged uh, to be to, to, to continue with the ministry, though I never closed it. I, I, I'm always faithful to God, God is using me mightily. Um, however, they wanted to. I don't know why rejection, even those that I grew up, they just reject me. I mean, lies after lies, the leaders of the church, uh, I was the senior son who was to take over the ministry from where I was born. It never happened. I came to Pretoria under instruction of God six years ago, before, just before the, uh, COVID-19, up until it was done and I was called back home as the Lord spoke to take over because my spiritual parents are, are old now. Then they called me to move in. I went in. I moved in with my family. What I was supposed to do, it never happened because I was fought like every side, lying and lying up until one day I was told to lay low and refused to lay low. I just said, okay, let me be an usher. Then they, they just sat me out. I only found, because I'm a dreamer, I'm a prophet, when God revealed to me about the people that were busy, that I will help. I don't know, was it a, a, a power hungry or what? Then the Lord said, I just, just step back. I never said anything. I just kept quiet. But my parents, they just abandoned me. New people, they just came. I, I don't know what happened. So even in my work with God, since the ministry, I was never mentored the way I was supposed to. I was just led by the grace of God. And it was very difficult because where I have a ministry, it's my hometown. I was fought by everyone. I'm a false prophet. I'm using this and that and whatever and whatsoever. Until the Lord said, okay, now a time has come to leave Bethlehem. Then I was showed Pretoria. I just came to Pretoria not knowing what's going to happen. Though I never shut the ministry in Bethlehem, I moved in order to expand the ministry. Not running away from the rejection, but I understood why I was rejected because of what the Lord is putting has placed in my life. Well, by the time I was supposed to start the ministry, they fought me in my home. I don't know whether I was a threat, saying that I'm going to take people from home into my ministry. It even it was spreading all over that I've already opened a ministry, though I didn't not yet. I had to stop in order to prevent this storm that was coming, most especially from my home. Then I was lost. I'm all alone. At some point, I'm a giver. I have a good heart. I have, there are one, two people here that knows me well from my previous home, how I operate, and I've been small in my own eyes. However, I end up saying, let me just quit about the ministry and focus into my business for, to, to sustain my family. God, the Lord has blessed me with beautiful twin girls. They're seven years now. My wife, she's still studying. She's doing vet. I'm, I'm the one who's paying her varsity study uh, education. But I was discouraged in, into a ministry. I said, Lord, if this cup should be removed from me and just be a normal person, I'll be happy because things are not going well. Now, even, I don't know, it, it has now affected my business. I have money, it goes. Even my driver today said, you know what? When we celebrate something that we fixed in the, in the truck, something that is bigger than a celebration that will demand more comes. Up until I, I, I'm, I'm like, Lord, 
you, you, you are the one who knows. But I, I'm, I cannot fall from the grace. I've encountered Jesus. I, 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 uh, the way I've encountered Jesus, it, it, won't, it won't be easy for me to fall from the grace. That is why it, it took time for me to take a step and ask God, where can I go? I can't just sit. I travel from, to maintain my ministry in free state. But I, I, I knew that God wants me to do something here. I was afraid because people have disconnected from me, more especially from where I came from. I, I feel the arrows that are hitting me. I once stayed in the street. I was saved while I was still in the street. I served in the ministry while I was in the street. I never asked for an accommodation and everything. But the Lord transformed me up until now. I have my home, though I'm renting a townhouse at, uh, in uh, Pretoria East. They witnessed how I was doing, on, especially on my work with God starting to be introduced into the gospel. I lived in the streets. Um, I was never raised by my mother and my father was rejected. Up and, in fact, when my mother was found out she was pregnant, they tried to, to terminate the pregnancy with the help of my grandmother. But the Lord rescued me. I, I never enjoyed life since I was born. Everything I have to, I get it very hard. At some point, I don't know how I, I got where I am today. However, people will just accept me for, for some time. Suddenly, they will reject me. When you talk about the contract, I'm supposed to sign a contract with Sasol, which is my breakthrough. I, I did all what is needed suddenly the person who was supposed to do the things he doesn't answer the calls I, I, I don't know but I know that God has been there for me he showed me that I'm going somewhere that's what is holding me to say you know let me not focus on what is happening let me focus on what the Lord has showed me so did you plant a church in free state? It's, this is, it's, nine, it's nine years now. It never shut. It, it, I'm talking about a ministry that is operating like this. But, 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 but it was your church? Yes. I was, re, I was released to, 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 for the ministry. And where I was released, it was my home. I'm, I've been saving. Even though I opened, I, I, I opened the ministry, but I was still the son where I was. Okay, so you were not, it was not your church. It was, it's my church. I, I, I have You're a, a ministry. pastor. I'm a senior pastor. I am a prophet in my the church in Free State. In Free State? Yes. But that's the one that they don't want you to be in. You open another ministry. No. Okay. I'm just trying to get, get the information. I was raised and born in a certain church that I cannot call by the name now. Up until... God used me in that home where okay. I was born. Okay. I was saving as okay. I was ordained as a yeah. prophet. I was Saint served God. as yes. Uh, started, then you started your own church. I served in the ministry up until I was released to open the ministry. Yes. Then I went back to Free State to establish a ministry in okay. 2014. Okay. Up to today. Okay. While I was in my ministry, I was still saving where I was born. I was released wow. because they will call me to minister, more especially to pray for the wise men of the house okay. as the son of the house. So, what happened, I think three years back, my parents, they called me and said, son, the Lord has spoken that you are the one to step in our shoes to take over the ministry because okay. we are about to retire. Okay. They called me to go back home. Okay. But yet the ministry was still busy because I left people that I, 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 I grew up to uh, into the ministry. Yeah. 
I left them with my ministry. I obeyed the voice of God. I went back home to serve on what the Lord has said. I went home. But what amazed me is when I got home, the things that I was supposed to do as I was told, they uh, never. Why? Because my home was already having sons who were saving. So they were fighting me, these sons. Everyone. Okay. So, so, and your church is still going or not? It's still going, even today. It never, it never shut, even after okay, but when I left. somebody my... else running it now? Yes. Okay. Are you still overseeing it or not? I'm still overseeing it. These three weeks that I came, first time, I came as a visit, like I was at home, I, I was like, God, where can I, I feel like I can go somewhere where I don't know where I can worship. By the grace of God, the Lord instructed me here. I came here, I asked one of the ladies here who, know, who, who knows me from home, who can testify about me. I just said, because he, she told me that, okay, she found home. In fact, a lot of people they were offended, they left the church after they've learned of what they did to me. Then I said, sister, sister, send me the location. I want to come to church, just to, to fellowship. I came with my wife. That's when the Lord spoke uh, through you. So since the Lord spoke a week, three weeks ago, I was maintaining that thing to say, Lord, has, he never forsaken me. He's reminding me not to forget the ministry because I was like, even the ministry in first aid, I decided to, like, to shut it down. I, I was in the point of just shutting it down out and forget about the ministry. Because imagine when your home is, has abandoned you for no reason. I was like, God, have you removed the mantle or what? So, after I received the prophecy, I told myself, let me maintain until something happens. That is why I, I, I sacrificed not, not to, to go for these three weeks. I told myself I will attend encounter for a month to, to feed my, my soul, my spirit, because I was discouraged. That is why I'm here even today. I, I, I started to follow encounter and being partner. I'm now a, a partner at encounter, trying to find a new place called home, new friends, because I, I'm alone. It will be set for me tomorrow when the ministry is there in Pretoria, but when I have to talk about my history I, and tell people that I, I don't have anyone. It's good to say I have a ministry, but you know where I came from. I have why, why are you in Pretoria now? Come again? Why are you in Pretoria now? I came here to follow the calling of God. I, I, three years ago, before I would go back to my home where I was, um, I was yeah. raising the church, I, was, I came here to open the ministry. Okay, did you open it? No. Before I opened it, a lot happened. A lot happened. They, they fought me. They started to pray to bind the ministry not to start not to, from my home. Then I decided, you know what? I don't want tomorrow. My home says I stole people from their church, from the, from, from the church into my church. A lot of commotion happened. I decided, you know what? Let me stop it. But you want to start a ministry in Pretoria, but your wife is a free state. No, my wife, she's still studying. Okay, okay. Yes, so okay. If weekends, or okay. more especially when the school has closed, okay. we come home. Okay. Like, like three weeks ago, she was here because the school was closed. Okay. So, come and stand here. Because as I was walking here, I said, we need to pray for you and fix the situation now. Because... What did I say to you? Did I prophesy anything three weeks ago or something? What did I say? Can you remember? I know I was speaking more maybe to your wife eh, at that time or not. Or was I speaking to you? I can't, rem I can't remember. No, you spoke about, you, you saw the properties that God is, mm. is, going, is manifesting. And after you spoke about the, pro the, the properties and the blessing that is coming, you also spoke about the ministry, not to forget about the ministry. And you even said, 
you've been asking yourself where to go, who to submit, who to. But you said the spirit, the, the Lord said, He will give me wisdom on association, who to associate with. And so on that part, I said, You know, God, I cannot live here. If you say, You'll give me wisdom on who to associate with right people. You even said, You saw it, that the people that I used to be in the, in the past, they used the anointing upon my life for the, not for a good purpose. Now that, and you saw that they are now using it against me. Then the Lord said, I should not forget about the ministry. You, you said you saw me planting the ministries and walking around. From there, I was encouraged that, wow, if my home can abandon me and a prophet has located me to say no, even if they can abandon you, but you have a calling. And I was reminded, the Lord said, the spirit of the prophets is, sub is subject under the control of the prophets. I knew that I, I, I came at the right place. Then I said, you know what? I cannot go to say, to look for people that you spoke about that they are, God will give me a wisdom on how to associate and who to associate. I said, Lord, I'm sitting here. I cannot go to another churches or wherever looking for the right people to associate or whatever. Because I, to I told my wife, you know, I cannot live there. Let me just go and submit there. Let me humble myself. Whatever that I have to do to be part of this home because I believed I was sent by God here and I waited on God to and I knew God will do something I just kept quiet I prayed I believed that I felt the anointing let me say I'm very sensitive I, I prayed and said Lord is this the man that you have sent me but if it is so it shall, it shall be seen today. And indeed you spoke. But I said, let me maintain this prophecy where I received it. God cannot release a prophecy and send you somewhere to look. I knew that my blessing is here. I knew that my home is here. That is why I said, I, I won't go to, back to first state. Let me maintain this until I'm strengthened, I'm filled to do what brought me to Pretoria. I was in Pretoria. When they called me home, I stayed at home. They chased me. I had to come back to Pretoria. By the grace of God, I could manage. I don't know if I have to call it by no, name. No, you don't have to say the names. But I mean, is it people from the previous church or is it people from your church? No. The, the people from my home church. Your first church? Okay. okay. Yes. The, the one you submitted to? Yes. Okay. Okay. So let me, let me tell you the wisdom of God. Uh, is it okay, church? Don't worry. It's a serious situation. That's why God is pointing him out. He prayed about it. Now you heard his story. I could have picked anybody, but that is whom God has told me to do. We speak about the business because your business and your ministry, as I said to you last week, prophecy is, 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 prophecy is in part. So, but I want to give you the wisdom because I, want, I need to give you wisdom and we need to pray because as I was walking, the Lord says that we need to pray for some, this thing to be finalized and to be complete that has tried to remove and distract you. So, you should have never gone back, okay? When you were called upon, you shouldn't have gone back. It is not rebellion. You see, if you have your own children, if you were sent out by them, if I sent out somebody into ministry and they become their own father, that meaning they, 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 become, they get their own children. Let me say it like this. If my daughter is 30 years old, she has her own children. And I said, no, you need to leave your children. You need to come look after me. No, her responsibility is her children, not her parents. So a little bit in ministry, there's been a perversion with certain ministry associations where we say we must honor the father more than our children. 
Now I'm not speaking of somebody that's rebelling out and going to do that without being, but you say you were sent out, you were blessed out, you were released, and you went and planted your ministry. Even, even, after, even after I planted the ministry, now and then I'll be called home to minister. I'll be called home, especially when my, my mom would always say, It's okay know, to minister, it's okay. But you shouldn't have gone permanently back. Yeah, I, yeah I'm, I, I'm now I, I get a picture, but... I know you, know, I know you don't know because you didn't know what to yes, do. Yes, I didn't know. But, yes. but, and you did the best that you could. But you shouldn't have gone back because I, God has given I, you a ministry. I regret going back. Huh? I, I, I'm, I'm regretting why I did go it's back. It's not dishonoring them. Are they alive still? Come again? Are they alive still? Yes. Okay, it's not dishonoring them. We're not dishonoring them. We're not speaking of them. They might be great. I, I don't know. I'm speaking now regarding your life. That is all. You shouldn't have gone back there because that's not dishonor or anything like that. You were sent out. If you had to work in a church, you should have stayed there. But I want to pray for something to be finished and turned around that God gives you full clarity. The witchcraft of the people and the name that I'm seeing the whole time in front of me I don't know why I'm seeing that name. What did I say? Charles or Shaul or Sean, something like that, or, you know, something like that. And I keep seeing a name, whether it's with business, whether it's with ministry, whatever it might be. But and I know you're not going to need to talk right now because this is public and it's, it's, it's we don't want to get you into trouble right now. But you're not dependent on them in ministry right now. Okay, so, so a spell has been cast that was not supposed to be cast. No one has power over you. No one can tell you what to do. No one can chase you away from anywhere. Nobody has any power over you. We give people power over us because of a lack of knowledge and because of ignorance. We give them power over us. And this is where it has gone wrong because you wanted to honor. You wanted to do the right thing, but there were people that are trying to destroy you. But you need to be lifted because you are an apostle, not a pastor. Yes, prophet, but you have an apostolic gift on you. I need you to understand this one. You think prophet because you feel prophet and you can prophesy and you see the future. But there's an apostolic gift on you that needs to be nurtured, that needs to be brought out. Because you will have works that you're supposed to be planted. Now I'm going to pray for you that God does something, that He gives you wisdom, that you will be able to have the grace, the health, and the anointing to fix the thing that you had, that He'll give you the grace to bring order there. And He'll give you the grace to plant a brand new work under the blessing of God, where there will be no regret, no doubt, no witchcraft, no praying. It doesn't matter. Do you know how many people are praying against me? Even today, people are praying against me. Against me. People are taking us to TV. It doesn't affect anything on me. The devil has no power over you. They have never called you. Either God has called you or they have called you. But if God has called you, no man can tell you what to do or to do this or to do that. So people can only break you if they've made you. But you say there's these things, there's incantations and so on. It can get to you because of fear, unbelief and legal, a bit of legalism. It can get to you. Many witches pray against me. Many Satanists pray against me. It has no power. It cannot make me sick unless I believe in that prayer and I believe in that curse. It cannot affect my family, cannot affect my finances, cannot affect my ministry. Because the enemy comes in by the thoughts. It was like I'm looking at an orphan spirit or an orphan and I'm seeing the lack of certain things with his parents or so in a certain area. And I'm seeing because of that, you felt that you had to be so loyal even to the point of it affecting your health. So the Lord understands these things, but we need to shift and realign things. 
when I was standing, when I said to you that I saw second business, just before I saw the second business, the Lord said to me, pray and tell him the truck that doesn't want to move or doesn't move is not moving. Just before I say this, a second business. The second business should not be going right now. The business that you have, the transport should be going. We're going to be praying for that. So what am I doing? I'm giving now direction and calling. It does, this does not come out of the gift. It comes out of the office. This is not about me seeing something. It comes out of the office. It comes out of speaking. So I... Because this has affected your wife, your family, your daughters. It is, is it your daughters? Do you have daughters? It's your, it's your do, affected your daughters. It affected, this thing affected everything. So I'm going to give you an instruction right now. I don't know who that name is, but you can come to me afterwards if you know of anything of that name. Stretch out your hands towards him, church, and pray for him. Give me, give me oil. By the power of the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ. Before I pray for that, I want to give you an instruction. Do you go back to free state sometimes or not? Yeah, I, I randomly go anytime. Sorry? I, I, I go anytime. Okay. Yes. I want you to go to that house, that church. I want you to go to your parents, your spiritual parents. I want you to give them a seat. I want to ask you to pray for them to bless you. That's it. Just pray for them to bless you and to release you that you can do what you need to do. Do that. Just do it as a seed. Tell them you want to honor them with your life as you go and you do certain things that you can do what needs to be done. You give them a seed. Honor them. I'm not saying don't give them your house. Don't give a, just give a seed of, out of honor. Just give not something ridiculous. Just a seed out of honor. Give them a seed. Ask them for, your, for their blessing, that they may bless you for the work that you've done and to release you to go to Pretoria. Because God is going to do something in Pretoria with you. He's going to move you a little bit out of Pretoria, but He's going to do something in Pretoria with you. And the Lord is going to do a new work with you. And He's going to seal off the things of the past. He's going to fix a relationship with your church in, with, with the one that you planted. There's going to be healing coming. But the Lord is saying to me this, also be very careful of a certain person. Because there's a family that I am going to remove. And when this family is removed, do not fear or think something went wrong. The Lord is saying my hand is at work. When I remove this family, when I take this family out of the midst, something refreshing and renewing is going to come. Because even there, in that work, even there, the enemy tried to take your authority and the enemy tried to take your position. You should have never gone back to be an usher. I'm just telling you what uh, you should not have done. And I pray for restoration, that God will restore and redeem the time back. That Father, if I be a prophet, as I called him out two weeks ago or so, and I spoke to him and I told him things without knowing anything. I pray right now that there will be restoration. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, in the witness of your people here, in the witness of angels here, I pray that the calling upon his life will be restored, that no one can steal his mantle. I rebuke the lie of the enemy that says that his mantle is lifted. I destroy the thoughts and, and, and beliefs 
system of the enemy that says that the anointing is lifted and the grace is lifted. No grace is lifted from his life. No anointing is lifted. No mantle is lifted, says the Lord. For the Lord is saying, stop believing to lies, for I've called you as a Gideon, as a mighty man of God, says the Spirit of the Lord. For even this night, I'm going to remove the web. For even the first night, when I prophesied over you and your wife here, the Lord showed me the web of witchcraft. I saw it in your face. And I saw this thoughts clouding you. Now as a prophet of the living God, I rebuke every thought. I pray for life to come into your eyes. I pray for life to come into your face. I pray for your countenance to be lifted. I pray that you'll be crowned by the Lord Jesus Christ. You'll be crowned by a prophet tonight and not be crowned by any witch, not be crowned by any witchcraft. And I remove anything that is upon your life in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for a refreshing. I pray for a renewing upon his life. Le rosca ale ke brosca re de na masco te ke na man brosca taia. Be rosca re ke na man ro dosca te na maia. Sa brosca re de le be na masca te ke na man brosca te ke na man brosca taia na maia. Rosca es ke te. Brosca te le ena canote de bandre be na maia. Any curse spoken upon his life, we lift it from his head. I pray that freedom be his portion tonight. I pull out the daggers of betrayal. I pull out the arrows of betrayal in the name of Jesus Christ and every fiery dart from his life in Jesus' mighty name. I pull it out from him. I pray that every word that has been spoken and every spell that has been cast, I remove it in the name of Jesus Christ. Set him free this night. Set him free. I pray for an adir upon him, a mantle, a fresh anointing. A fresh anointing. Lift him up, 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 lift him up. Baroska arekeneme. Fresh anointing. Fresh mantle. Fresh. 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 Pier river. A pier river. A pier river. A pier anointing. A pier anointing. Raise the voice of his spirit. Raise the words in his mouth. Give him a voice in the realm of the Spirit. Every Spirit, loose him. Loose him. you as God called you you don't know or do you yes or no as God called you yes, God. he has called you so go and do what he has called you to do amen you don't you don't need you don't you receive importation from me The whip that is spun over your mind, I want it to be removed. But no more lies of the enemy you believe. There's an anointing in you. And I pray that from this night something will be established, a new grace. Nothing has been lifted from your life. The enemy has tried to blind your eyes and darken your eyes because you just saw fear and fear and fear and fear, even in dreams, fear. In the dreams that would come to him. Thank you, Jesus.
free. <laughs> Come give Jesus a praise offering. Come on. Give Jesus a praise offering. Come on, praise him, praise him, praise him. But it was this for that that is worth it, okay? If we're prophetic church, people will come and, and I don't know, like I said, he didn't told, never called me, he came for that. But I pray that God will restore you. I know that God will restore you. I'm not praying that God will restore you. I know that God will restore you. Amen. Let's raise our hands to the Lord. Oh, bef oh you have given already? Okay, raise your hands to the Lord. Okay. <laughs> Father, I pray for the anointing, for the presence, the Spirit of God. Let the gifts move in their lives. Let the river of life move in their life. Let ministry, business, discipleship, making disciples. Let them be able to set people free. Let the anointing rest upon them. In Jesus' mighty name. Come and let's give them a praise offering, church. We're going to see you Sunday for the conference. Uh, next week, Sunday. Just come to me after the service. I'll see you next week, Sunday. God bless you. If you would like to give into this ministry, we have made giving your tithes, seed, or offering as simple and effortless as possible. You can simply log on to encounterchurch.co.za or leondupria.com and click on the Give button. Here we show you the different ways to give. It's so easy. You will find giving options for local or international giving. PayFast is a fast and secure way for South Africans to give. You can give once off or make a recurring donation. Here you will find the Zapper and SnapScan QR codes as a simple and effortless way to scan and give into the ministry. If you prefer to make an electronic transfer, the banking details of our various campuses and the Visionary Fund are also readily available. For giving internationally, Cash App is one of our fast and simple giving platforms. PayPal is another method for quick and easy giving internationally. You can use your PayPal account or you can give straight from your credit card. DonorBox is also available, which accepts a variety of international giving methods. For those who would like to take hands with us and become a part of the incredible work that God is doing, become a friend and partner of Encounter and Leon Dupria. We have many partnership tiers available to suit your preference. Our friends and partners receive exclusive materials from Leon Dupria, as well as private live streams and exclusive events. Thank you for being part of what God is doing.